Okay, well, my name is Carol Spears. I am a stress consultant and also a motivational speaker. And I'm also founder of International Stress Awareness Week, which is the first week in November every year. So if you're interested in health and well-being and managing stress, then speak to me, connect with me at LinkedIn. Of course, everything's LinkedIn now, isn't it? Uh, so connect with me and we can talk about what it is that you can do. Okay, the question that is on people's lips, first thing when you see them is this. The question is, how are you? And the answer is? Fine, thank you. Meaning? Nothing. Meaning nothing at all. Exactly. The other, the other answer might be this one. Busy. We all seem to spend our lives being busy. As if we wear this busy as a badge of attainment. You know, I, I'm busy. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I didn't say it was amazing. I'm just, I'm busy. I'm busy. Oh, th th that's fantastic. Well, actually, I think I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. So the word busy is really what is happening, is what people are saying all the time. So is it really relevant? We wear it, as of I said, as of this badge of honor. And as PAs, I think that this is something that is really, really important. Because as the PA, you're responsible for you, you're responsible for others. And that really is something that is valuable, important. So we're wearing our word busy as a badge of honor. But then we can get caught up with this busy executive syndrome. What is this busy executive syndrome? Well, it's when your body is moving, it's when your body has, is actually kick-starting the adrenaline, the cortisol, your endorphins. And this is what happens to you. You can't say no. You're saying yes to everybody. You're saying not only yes to everybody, to everything. Because a part of you finds it very difficult to actually say no. Make sense? It's where we are. It's where we are. So what can we do about it? We know we've got this busy executive syndrome. We know that, is it a syndrome? Yes, it is. We know that people can burn out. And people do burn out. So what happens to us as this busy executive is so that we end up not eating properly, not sleeping properly, and we become an adrenaline junkie. You're rushing here, you're rushing there. You've got no time for anybody, least of all yourself. And that's your life. You grab food on the hop. You take a sandwich, pack it of crisps, because you're running and you're rushing. Oh, I'll eat properly another time. And this is what we do, isn't it? We all get caught up with that. We all get caught up with it. And then what happens? That's the one. Your body does break down. Now you say, no, it wasn't going to happen to me. I'm going to beat the system. No problem. But you can't beat the system. Because that's what happens to our bodies. Because it does break down. And it's the signs and symptoms are there. What can you look out for? Well, I'm tired all the time. I go to bed at night, I wake up in the morning, and I'm every bit as tired as when I went to sleep at night. You're not recharging your batteries. It doesn't matter. I will next week. And then when next week happens, I will the week after. It's just a very busy time. And you think, oh, that word busy. Yet again. So this is what happens to all of us. But for all of us in this room, no two people are the same. It affects everybody differently. Everybody differently. I'd like you to imagine a vase. A vase with a crack in it. Now, the vase cracked. You dropped it, it cracked. You put it back together again. 
No one was going to see the crack. You're going to turn it to the side, against the wall. The vase can be used for artificial flowers, yes. But that vase cannot be used to put water into. So will the vase ever be the same? No. Is it usable? Yes. So I don't know if any of you have known anybody that ever broken, that's ever broken down. But that person, the chances are they never get back to full capacity again. They may not go back to the same job, and maybe they shouldn't, because maybe it was the job that was on the way to burnout. So maybe they shouldn't. So when I see a client and they say to me, I'll never go back to that job again. And I'll say, do you know something, John? That's really okay. Because you were not in control at that particular moment. Breakdown can happen to anybody at any time and any place. It doesn't matter whether you are a celebrity or us. It makes no difference. When breakdown happens, it happens. A friend and colleague called Jeff McDonald used to be the former VP HR Unilever. He broke down four years ago. He's now a mental health campaigner. A part of what I do is I head up a stress and mental health charity. And Jeff McDonald is one of our patrons. So Jeff is now working full time in mental health campaigning. So we move on. So the question to ask ourselves here is, very simply, are you stressed? Are you stressed at this moment? Are you experiencing any of these symptoms? And I mean on a regular basis. Because there are times when you're not sleeping. There are times when there's something on your mind. But is it happening regularly? There are times when you feel a lack of confidence. I don't think I can. And somebody says, yes, of course you can, Carol. And I say, no, no, I don't think I can. So we can experience that lack of confidence and that lack of self-esteem. And that feeling of, I just don't feel good. I just don't feel good. So if I were to say to you, what are the kinds of signs and symptoms that you experience, what would you say? Call out. What do you experience when you're stressed? Can't focus on one thing. Can't focus. Absolutely. Can't focus. Absolutely right. What else have we got? Anger. Anger. Yeah. What else? You can't sleep properly because you're thinking about the issues and the problems in work. Overthinking. <laughs> so is this peculiar? Is it unusual? No. It's us. So therefore, if we are recognizing the warning signs, the only question I'll say to you is, what can you do about it? Because you can recognize, yes, you can, you can end up going to the, the doctor's surgery. He'll give you your 10 minutes, or is it five? I think it's 10, actually. He'll give you your 10 minutes and make sure you only bring one problem. So you try and sneak in another one, which this one is connected with that. Well, actually, no, your feet are not connected to your head, but I, can I, that sort of thing. So then you'll go to the doctor. I can't sleep. And he'll say, well, how's work? Oh, it's so busy. Oh, God, it's that busy again. He'll say, oh, I'll give you some sleeping tablets. So it starts. It can start. So really, the only person that you can do anything about it for yourself is, is you. And you need to look at here where we're on a curve where you can see rust out is when we're bored and burn out is when you've burnt out. There is a continuum here. So you can get to optimum performance. Yes, you can. You get to optimum performance, but you're going to vacillate from one to the other the whole time. How long are you going to stay at optimum performance for? A long or a short period of time? Short if you don't look after yourself. Short, exactly right. Because even if you do look after yourself, you'll still be short because one thing goes wrong, another thing, you know, things aren't always balanced the whole time. So it's going to be a short period of time, a very short period of time. 
There are many misconceptions about stress. Let me ask you in this room, is stress good for you? Yes or no? Yes. Um, do you say there's healthy stress and non-healthy? Okay, so we've got a healthy and non-healthy over here. What else we got? Is, is stress good for you? Okay, let's do a show of hands. I know it's a bit boring, but let's just do a show of hands. Yes or no? Yes, is stress good for you? Some say yes. So the rest of you say no. Are there more saying no? Hands up. Okay. Right. The no's are correct, but I'll tell you why. What we're saying is, is that pressure is good for you, which is what you're talking about, and stress is not. It's simple. It's not complicated. So what is, what is stress? What is stress? Pressure's good for you. Stress is not. not. Pressure's almost stimulating. stimulating. Yes. So it actually works on that, whereas stress just keeps attacking you with your sleep, your eating, your behaviour. Mm. If you get psoriasis, eczema, yes. it might inflame those things. So what it does, it's attacking mm -hmm. various parts of your body. Mm. So your bodily functions in, you know, sleeping, the eating, etc. Okay. So then it's yeah. breaking you down. Yes, it does. Too much. Pressure is challenging. Good pressure is challenging. Pressure, you'll thrive on pressure. Pressure gets you up in the morning. Pressure gets you to, gives you your get up and go. Pressure motivates. So, what was the point that we had over here? What was stress? It's too much pressure. That's it. It's not complicated. Pressure's great. Pressure's brilliant. Pressure is where you want to be. We know on the curve, sometimes you'll tip over. I get it. But actually, Pressure is where you want to be. Can we stay in the pressure zone the whole time? I was going to say, good luck, because you probably can't. It's fact. But know what, know what your hot spots are. I know for me, timekeeping is one of them. I know that of old. Wherever I'm going, particularly as a speaker, I have to be there, not just early, but early plus, plus, plus. Because whatever goes wrong will stress me out the roadworks, the traffic, this crane thing outside, whatever. Doesn't matter. Because as a speaker, I will not be late. And after being on platform for over 25 years, I'm telling you, I've never yet been late. Purely because I have time on time. So even with time on time, there have been occasions when I've scraped in, and it's dreadful. You know, you're rushing outside the door. They're rushing, rushing. You come on. Hello, everybody. <laughs> you know, you, you, this is the swan effect. You know, I'm absolutely fine, but actually, you're not really. So, what we're saying is pressure's good for you. Pressure you can manage. Pressure you can cope with. Pressure is your motivator. Stress is too much pressure. Simple. Nothing more to say. It affects everybody totally differently. So your answer, let's just say it everybody. What's the difference between both? Pressure is good for you, pressure you can manage, pressure you can cope with. Stress is too much. And recognize the signs when it's actually becoming too much. Simple terms, nothing complicated. So when somebody says to you, it's just semantics, it's not very important, yes, is there healthy stress? We had healthy stress many years ago. We used to call it use stress. Things changed, everything changes over the years. So this is our stress. So if we're looking at different types of situations that can cause you stress, speaking may be one of them. I heard you say before when you were speaking, when we were talking here, and uh, he said about having a video, and some of you went like, oh, that's nice, and some of you went like, oh, God, no, no, please, not a video. And I'm gonna say to you, because he did mention it, it's really important because that's what people buy. They buy you. Do they buy the paper? Yes, that's your backup. But actually they buy how you speak. And part of my role is a speaker coach. And I can say to you that actually how you present yourself in terms of all of this and what comes out of here is fundamentally important. And I've interviewed countless people over the years. Countless, countless people. So, I do this for a living. How many of you would like to do this job? 
Oh, come on. Oh, I've got half of one. I've got two halves makes one whole. Yes, we haven't seen the entirety of what you do. <laughs> <laughs> this is certainly true. I'm talking about standing up on platform. So it's standing up on platform. It's talking, to the, it's talking on TV. It's having those moments of speaking to the media. It's having an audience of 300 people, 500 people, 1,000 people, doesn't matter. Beyond the first two rows, you can't see anybody. So it's not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody wants to do this. So is this stressful? Is this stressful? <coughs> not for you. It depends on what kind of person. Some people feed on it. Some people who are more introverted, they don't like it. Right, well, I'm going to send around a card, which is going to test your stress levels. Can you take one and pass it around? Take and pass around. And I'd like you to test your stress levels at this very moment, sitting there, chilled out, nice and relaxed. They're coming round? Right, place thumb on square pad. Expected. Okay. Everybody got? No. Right. No? How can you be no? Oh, Hang about. <laughs> there you go. Right. I want to know how many of you are green. Got some greens here. You're chilled out. You won't be green if you're up here. Okay. How many of you are blue? So mainly got greens. Mainly got greens. Blue? Green. 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 Okay. I'm going to explain to you what it is. Yes, it's yours. It's my gift to you. Okay, you ready for the explanation? When you are stressed, when you are stressed, the, thumb, the heat pad will change color. It's called biofeedback. What happens is this. What happens is this, is that when you get stressed, the blood is constricted to your fingertips. That is what it's reading. So where were my green ladies? Green ladies. Right, I would like a volunteer. What am I doing actually? I'm volunteering, I don't know what I'm doing. What colour were you? Green. You were green. Okay, please come up here. Slowly. Slowly. I want you to, what's your name? Linda. Linda, I want you to think about this. Linda is going to take over. Linda is going to take over my presentation. I want you to know this. She has had no prep. She's in front of all of you. Do you come to this group very often? No. So you may, you may actually never see her again. <laughs> that may be the case. Right, Linda, you were green. So it means you're very chilled and very relaxed. She's already not. She can already tell. I mean, can you see all of this, like getting like, you know, I don't know why. Right. I would like you to continue, Linda. And I think, I want you to think to yourself, your whole reputation is dependent on the next 60 seconds. Action. Good evening, everybody. My name is Linda. Um, I've been thrown into this rather rapidly, so I don't quite know what I'm actually talking about. Um, we're talking about stress. I'm currently very stressed. Can you hear it in my voice? Because I can. Yeah. I normally have a much deeper voice and much more theatrical, but this is actually very stressful. I can feel my heart rate very rapid. Um, I can feel myself actually changing colour. Uh, I don't know if it's a hormonal oh, okay. flush or it is actually just... Quick, stress. quick hormonal flush. <laughs> yes, very quick hormonal flush. I have no idea what mine is. Go on, go on, go on, go on, Karen. Um, so, um, I'm umming. That's also a very bad thing if I'm actually public speaking to you because I am panicked about what I'm trying to say to you. So that one. Right, we're going to call it to an end. I want you to place your thumb on there. Can we have a round of applause for her, please? <laughs> right, let's have a look. Black. Mm. See the black coming through? So you are certainly stressed. <laughs> right, so therefore what we managed to do was to kickstart the stress reaction. That's what you've done. This is a business card. Yes, it is. However... This is actually your stress test card, and it's my gift to you. Use it. 
It will, you, you can use it for always, just don't lose it. If you really lose it, call, write to me and I'll send you another one. But otherwise, this will last forever. It hasn't got any finite time, so that's your stress test card. So, okay, it is stressful. Our immediate reactions, Linda, can you recognize any of these? All of it. All of it. it wasn't even a question of some, she had all of that. So all of that is what we had. What happened was fight or flight. Nothing wrong with it. Your body works really well. You sit there for, I will not won't, won't call upon you again. You sit there for another quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, with me not calling upon you, I might just, no, I won't, I won't, I won't. It'll go down to your green again. What's important about the card is this, is it monitors how you feel. It monitors your reactions. It monitors what's going on inside your body. So you sit down of an evening and you say, oh, I'm really chilled. I'm watching a lovely box set on Netflix, but actually you haven't switched off. Try the card. The card, the stress test card will not lie. So even though some people say to me, it's black all the time, and I'll, they'll say, Scott, there's a mistake. Yeah. And I'll say, no, no, it's no mistake. Your body hasn't switched off. But everybody says, no, it's a mistake. No, no, I've got the only 40 card that there is in the whole pack. Well, actually, do you know something? You haven't. So, ladies and gentlemen, what color is that for me? Green. Green. What else? Any other colors? What color is my stress test card pad? Come on, give me some colors. Chuck it out. Green. Green. Blue, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, 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 blue yellow. Ye yellow? <laughs> and the last one, relaxed. Right, okay. I've got news for you. You're all wrong. <laughs> so what's the colour? Black. black. Now, why? Why is it black? Adrenaline. Adrenaline, yeah. Give me some ideas. Why is it black? It's still stressful up here. There's a lot risking on this. You know, you're all sitting there. You've all waited. You're all staying here. There's a lot resting on this. Is This job is high profile and it's high risk. People in the orders may not love you. You want your audience all to love you. Look, they don't. I say that to my, my clients who want to become speakers. I want my audience to love me. <laughs> I say, I've got news for you. They won't. But they must. They must get what I say. They may not. So why am I doing it? So well, you ask me. So it's those kinds of things. So what's important is fight or flight will work, and it does. You need to know how to turn it off. And that bit is up to you. So whatever you do to turn it off, it doesn't matter. Because if you don't turn it off, this is what's going to happen. You have to turn off that switch. And if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to say no, and you're the kind of person who doesn't know where to find that on-off switch, that's what you need to do following today. Because following today, I want you to take away some tips. We're coming into tips now. One tip or two tips. There's more tips in my book. But however many tips you take away, implement them. Because in my role as a speaker, what's important is that hopefully the audience find it of value. Yeah, you may not love me, I get that. I'd love you to love you, but if you don't, it's, but ideally, take away something and implement. So this is what we're gonna, so recognize the warning signs. Because if you don't, I don't mean you're gonna die, I just mean there are triggers. There are triggers around for you, where you say, some people say to me, well, Carol, when I get really, really stressed, I get stomach pains. Other people say, Carol, when I get really, really stressed, I get headaches, can't sleep, irritable, angry. Whatever it is, whatever it is, think about the fact that we all have different triggers. So, ladies and gentlemen, causes of stress in the workplace. Here are some. What other causes of stress are there? What causes you stress at work? People. Yeah, Second, people. 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 Yeah. We're so lovely, but yet we cause so much stress. And yes, we do. What else we got? Deadlines. Deadlines. Carry on. Work environments. Work environments. So let's see what else we have. Excessive expectations. Now, what about the lack of recognition 
and reward. How many of you feel that they get sufficient recognition and reward? Let's have a show of hands. Sufficient. Gosh, you see, it's not enough. So whoever said people cause problems, yeah, they're right. Because everybody should feel that. And the times and times when I train managers, I train managers to listen, I train managers to communicate. And you know the one thing I say to them? Say thank you. They say, well, they get paid to do a job. I say, no, no, say thank you. I appreciated you staying extra time. And they say, will that work? And I said, try it. And sometimes I feel I'm teaching things that like should have been taught to them when they were 12 years old. Because the human relationship, and in your role as PAs, you know about the human relationship. You know about building trust. You know about building empathy. Because that's what you do. And it's such an important role. And I think you've got a challenging role, but it's such an important role. And everybody should feel valued. And then the manager might say to me, well, I don't say, I don't say to my PA, you've done a magnificent job and you're fantastic, uh, or thank you, because my boss doesn't do that for me. And I'll say this, just because the boss's boss doesn't say thank you and value your boss, does it make it right? For them not to do themselves. You have to treat people as you want to treat them and not necessarily how they are treated. So are there stressors? Yes, there are. Are there poor communications? You bet, yes, there are. And some of the effects of stress. Well, I've come up here, loss of talent, people leave, low morale. What other things? What other things are there for the effects of workplace stress? Give me what, what sort of things? Burnt out. Burnt out. What else? Mistakes. Making mistakes, can't concentrate, anything like that. You can become an absenteeism statistic. So if you can become an absenteeism to statistic, and I've put up presenteeism, what is presenteeism? To be present. Say again? To be in the situation present. Presenteeism is actually to be going to work when actually you don't feel good enough to go. So therefore, it's a need to be there a feel, a need to be seen, need to actually be there, but you're not working effectively or productively. That is presenteeism. Does it remind you of anybody? Half my answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happens. It's what happens. So now, the final part. <clears throat> we're, on the, we're on the nose. The final part are tips that I've taken from my book <clears throat> the book's full of tips, but I want to give you just three today to start off with. And then I'm going to come on to some other ones as well. So, some three tips to help you manage stress at work. The first one. Our top three time wasters. The phone, email, and meetings. Well, of course, and the meetings about meetings because we need to have a meeting to discuss. Oh, we know that, Linda, that absolutely goes with it. So let's look at the first one, your phone. Does it cause you stress? Are you tied to your phone? Yep. Are you addicted to your phone? Okay, would you admit to being addicted to your phone? <laughs> Do you get to a point where I can't be without my phone and like, <gasps> where is my phone? Yes. Constantly looking for it, even when it's in my hand. Even when it's in your hand? Yeah. <laughs> How many of you got children in the room? Do you ever play with your kids with your phone in your hand? No. Are you sure? Yeah, it stays downstairs. Who else has got children? He has the phone as well. Yeah, well, she does, but it's not allowed upstairs. Yeah. Because the phones, we are addicted to our phones. I think most of us in this room would say they were. You know, we go to the point where we think, well, no, no, we're not, we're not. No, no, really. Where's my phone? Where's, where is it? Is that moment of panic? Have you ever tried a day 
without your phone? Yes, I have. And how do you feel? What's weird? Do you feel I've just forgot it and I'm on the bus <laughs> and I'm at the bus stop and I thought about it and think, no, I'm not going back home for this. So I've just... So how was the day? You managed the day without it. Bravo! Yeah! Nobody died. No, you're right. It's actually funny if you ever do that. Get home with us. That's the worst. That's the worst. Everybody needs to speak to me. But actually. Oh my God, I've been panicked all day long. I've got home. I don't know. I get it. Nobody has run and no one has texted me. Oh, bless. Fair enough then. I was not feeling the love, but. <laughs> feel the love. Mm. Yes, I, yes. There are safety issues today. I accept that, which we didn't have, say, 10 years ago even, or maybe five. So I do understand that. You then do become the weirdo on the train who actually looks at other people, don't you? Yeah, I know, and, and, heaven, and heaven help you if you start reading a book. Do you remember these sorts of things that like became books that had paper attached to them? How peculiar. And you know, I took, I took out, I had a long, quite a long journey, and I took out a pen, I was writing something down, I was reading and writing, and I had like strange looks, strange woman, she's using a pen and paper. And I thought, yes, okay, fine. Okay, another one to ask you is this. When you go to bed at night, you know where I'm going on this one? Good, excellent. Where's your phone? Next to you or downstairs, downstairs. turned off? D okay, Hand Okay. let's be truthful. How many of you have your phones in your bedroom? Come on, be truthful. I knew you were in the minority. <laughs> Only because I'm trying to rule the example. I'm very pleased. I'm delighted. And I'm trying. So why do we have our phones in our bedroom? Because somebody might call me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, if they do, do you know something? I do not want to speak to them. <laughs> so why else do we have it? On the charge. On the charge. Do you know something? I'm going to say something to you. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, slow down. I love that. I've got news for you. There is power downstairs and next to your room. Say again. Sometimes it is downstairs, charged. Well, I bet it's a mistake. <laughs> so, our phones. Don't answer it just because it rings. What happens when the phone rings? The phone rings. <gasps> Where's the phone? Where's uh, Well, do you know saying voicemail works extremely well? And when I'm at home, my husband says, Carol, your phone's ringing. I don't know where it's coming from. I said, it's okay. He said, what do you mean it's okay? It's ringing. I said, yeah, and? If it really is that 15 million contract, pound contract from the United States who are going to offer me a movie part, you may call me back. But let's just pretend for a moment that's actually not going to happen. So, okay, Brad Pitt is probably not wanting to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning. So, okay. Know how to bring your conversations to an end. It's simple, but sometimes we end up talking, talking, talking. Bundle your outgoing calls. I know if I've got half a dozen calls to make, I'll do them all at one time. And then, I love this one. Turn off your notifications. I do now, no, I no longer now have whooshes and beeps and noises. I don't want to know how many emails are coming into my account. I don't want to see the number 1 to 20 to 30. I don't want to see it. Why? It stresses me out because it tells me what I have to do. So I stop them. And do you know something? I am a liberated woman. I really am. It has changed my life. Notifications, you've gone. I'm in control of my notifications. You are not in control of me. So that's your phone. Okay, number two, oh, that one, before you go to bed. Of course, that was extremely important. Okay, now, why have I put an alarm clock up there? Use the phone. Yeah. So, so somebody would say to me in the audience, I take, the, I take my phone to bed with me. Why? I've got to have the alarm clock. And I'll say, boom, boom, there's your alarm clock. But nobody said it. Nevertheless, it's still fact. Okay, number two, email. How many people in this room do not get enough email? You don't get enough, you can have my inbox. We all get too much email. It's that torrent. And again, I've turned off my alerts. I don't want to know. 
And how many of you are brave enough when you're doing a piece of work to turn it off completely? Close it down. Do you know what I'm saying? Outlook, you can close it down, which means you can still open it up. You can close down Outlook. Again, I don't want to see what I should be doing because this is what happens. I'm concentrating on a piece of work. Something drops into my inbox and I think, oh, because I'm curious. We're all curious. We're all addicted to what else is needed for us. And then I go and have a look. And these famous words, when I go back to my piece of work, show me I shouldn't have done that. Now, where was I? You actually don't know. Are you efficient or inefficient by taking that message? Inefficient. Multiply that inefficiency by how many times per day? I can't even tell you. But if you take nothing else from this presentation, think about that email. Think about your phones. Because you can control. You may say, I can't turn off my emails full time, all the time. Because ideally, I'd say to you, have times when you actually go on your email. But if you're doing something, the lack of, if you actually start having interruptions, you will no longer be efficient. And as PAs, you need to be efficient. You know that. That's what goes with the job. PA and efficiency goes together. That's the expectation. So think about it. Think about not letting the incoming mail to distract you and being realistic about your inbox. Somebody said that to me a little while ago. And I thought, do you know what I'm saying? That's true. I expect to clear my inbox and it ought to go quiet. But of course, it's unrealistic. It won't. So have realistic expectations. You're not necessarily going to get through every piece of email in that day. Yes, you're going to have to prioritize. And you're multitasking. I know as women, excuse me, sir. I know as women, we tend to say, I can manage everything. I can multitask. But you just say, we're better doing one thing at a time. If you've got a piece of work to do and you think it's going to take you half an hour, with interruptions, it'll take you how long? And with no interruptions, how long will it take you? So there's your efficiency. So you've actually made yourself more efficient yourself. This, what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is not complicated. But we're not doing it. We're truly not doing it. But it's nothing dramatic that I've said. Your final one, meetings. How many of you have no meetings to go to? We all have meetings to go to. Do they always start on time? Oh, the face. <laughs> no. Do they, ever, do they end on time? No. Does anybody keep an agenda that they keep to? No, the face again. But just look how much time is wasted. Could, do you have any input yourself into the meetings to make them more efficient? Could you? Maybe not, maybe yes. How many of you actually have to speak up at meetings? Yeah. How many of you like speaking up at meetings? The rest don't. But actually, PAs need to be seen, heard, and remembered for all the right reasons. All the right reasons. And I really would like to get PAs that step further to speak up and to speak out. It's so important. You're taking your position around the management table. And so you should. You should be seen for who you are. Speak up and speak out is exactly where you should be. So our meetings, stand up meetings, start and end on time. Don't set back to back meetings. So some people pride themselves. Oh, you know, I've been on back to back meetings all day today. I think, oh, how great. Is that good? Yeah, exactly. No, no, no time for peeing, please. I managed to cross my legs all day. I mean, you know, it's this pride thing. Like I'm busy or I've been to back-to-back -back meetings. Do I care? But this is pride. This is badge of honor that you, you, that you have. Right, to end up with some tools for you 
personally. We've looked at email, we've looked at our phone, we've looked at meetings. Now I want to look at some of your health and well-being. Some of your health and well-being. And don't forget what I said to you. It is Stress Awareness Week in November. Please keep in contact with me. Either way, keep in contact with me because there's lots of ideas that I can give you for your companies as well. Okay, let's go into the first one. Recognize the warning signs. You've got IBS, you want to know why. It could be due to stress, it may not be. You're getting headaches, you don't know why. Recognize, recognize what it is you're experiencing. Do something about it. Number two, we are what we eat. We know that. But when we're rushing and we're doing and we grab that sandwich or we grab the packet of crisps and you think, well, that's what we have to do, maybe for a short time you're okay. But are we all drinking two litres of water a day? I would say not. But you should be, because you need to be. And first thing in the morning, who's drinking a who's drinking at least a pint of water when they get up? Half a pint. Half a pint will settle. I'm sorry, I haven't got metric. But there should be a pint of water that you drink. If you drink a pint of water first thing in the morning, about the peeing, be very careful because it'll go straight through your system. But it's meant to because it's actually washing out your toxins. So I have a pint of water, half a lemon, every morning and go straight to the loo. Don't do it just before you're on a train. I get that. Sometimes we have to be sensible. So just get up a half an hour earlier before you take the train. Okay, so your headache remedies are caffeine. Be aware of caffeine. Aware that caffeine can be in your headache remedies together with your Coca-Cola. Not to forget as well that caffeine is in your pills, as I said, your headache remedies. Let me give you a little story on that. I remember being abroad, took, had a headache about six o'clock at night, took some anodin extra. Anodin extra has caffeine in it. Didn't sleep the whole night. I was not up to much the next morning. I learned. So if I get a headache and it's after like six o'clock, do not touch anodin extra. I learned the hard way. Number three, take regular exercise. How many of you actually can say, hand on heart, I take enough exercise? Okay, that's good. You should be proud of yourselves. But I would say however much exercise you take, you could probably do more, probably. And for those of you that haven't put their hands up, then you have to think to yourself, what else could I be doing? Is it carving out time in the day? I don't have time, I'm too, here we go, busy. So it doesn't matter what exercise you take, make sure you enjoy it. If you said to me, Carol, go swimming three times a week, I'll say to you it's unrealistic. And you'll say, why? I say, because I hate it. It's a fact. My hair will go curly and I'm a woman, and yes, you're right. So I won't do it. But if you tell me to go walking three times a week, I will do it. Ideally not in the rain, but even then I would. So cho choose whatever exercise plan works for you. Whatever works for you. All of a sudden, I'm just going to say three words. Just do it. I now keep my trainers in my car, so wherever I am, I can just go walking. It works for me. So number four. Without your phone next to your bed, <laughs> Next year. It's over by my mirror in the corner of the room. Okay, all right. I don't get up to answer it. I'm pleased to hear because yes. I'm not going to be calling you. I'm not. Okay, so a good night's sleep. You need to, the same way as you prepare yourself to get up in the morning, you can also prepare yourselves for going to bed at night. You may say to you, Karen, I've got a really important report to get done and I'm best at night, so I have some Coca-Cola at 11 o'clock at night and then I can't sleep. Surprise, surprise. Your body's awake. Your body's rearing to go. And then you try to sleep and you say it's bedtime and actually your body won't. So, number five, to be mindful. Anybody practice mindfulness here? Good. Living for the moment, enjoying the present. Wherever you are, wherever you are, you're walking down, and I'm not sure about this crane jobby thing. In fact, I have no idea what's going on out there, but anyway. But wherever you are, appreciate, value where you are. Actually think to yourself, 
It's a nice day. This is a moment. Think of that moment. Live in the present. Live in the present. And you can get mindfulness training in, you know, whatever works for you. Do it. Just do it. Number six, to seek help. There are times in all of our lives when having somebody to talk to can be helpful. I know insofar as I was a Samaritan for over 20 years, I've spoken to countless people at the other end of the phone. Not everybody was desperate. Some people just wanted someone to talk to. Very often late at night, when it's cold and it's dark and everything seems to be worse. So having somebody there at the other end of a phone is so important. But in order for you to know when to ask for help, you sometimes have to ask for it yourself. Our friends, our partners, our husbands, our wives can't necessarily know how we're feeling. So it's up to us. It's up to us to say, can I talk? And in your team of people around you, your partners, your spouses, your friends, your children, whoever it is, not everybody in that team of people is going to be a great listener. Maybe great at giving advice, but a lousy listener. Maybe a lousy listener, but great advice, whatever. Find the people who are in your dream team, in your support team, because it's different for everybody. So, what we need to do to help us manage our stress levels is to build our resilience to manage the stress. There will be times, whether it's in an industry, whether it's at work or home, where you may not be able to do anything about the stressful situation. That may be outside of your control. The stress at work may be outside of your control. However, how you manage the stress at work is inside of your control. There is no point worrying and getting more stressed over things that are outside of your control. Only concern yourself of what's inside. So your takeaways for today. Please, whatever takeaways you take away is great. Whether it's one point or two, whether there is a reminder. There's nothing dramatic about what I've said. They're reminders. But you know something, everybody? We don't actually do it. There's nothing complicated. When I talk to people, I talk on platform, I talk to the media, it's, <coughs> it's simple. It's straightforward. But we're not doing it. Because just do it doesn't necessarily happen. So whatever it is, take away, please, something from the presentation, a reminder, a word, just something that's stuck in your head. Because at the end of the day, nobody, nobody, nobody can do it for you. If this is personal responsibility. This is you saying, I'm going to actually manage myself. This is a machine better than I have. It doesn't mean you're falling to pieces. It doesn't mean you're onto burnout. But nevertheless, it can mean that this can be managed better. And the only person who can do that is you. This is one role, one role, one job, one task that you can't delegate. I know as personal assistants, you probably delegate extremely well. This is one job that you can't delegate. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thoughts? Half a thought. Um, Go. I, I got a new boss about six months ago, and she said, meeting for another two hours, and 
two hours. Yeah, if possible. Some of you have gone all day or like half a day. Well, you, you, so you, you've made progress. You've yeah. made progress. But two hours, I would say whatever can't be done in an hour, I, w I would yeah. normally look at an hour. Yeah. But it's progress. If it used to be all day and you're on to yeah. two hours, let's just to say well done. And you've got some places, some other places to go. As long as you've got an agenda, it's valuable, but people normally switch off. People's attention span is very, very limited. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Um, I lost my phone for like three hours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I honestly went into the biggest panic mode. I didn't know where I was going. Mm. I didn't know what mm. meetings I had. And I didn't know really what to do. And I rely on it so much. But then what happens to me is I'll go to bed and then I'm doing like email stuff from bed and I can't switch off because I, need, I know it needs to be done. So I don't know how to really just switch it off and just just don't do it. Mm. You really mustn't. It's you're not switching off. You're not recharging. Yeah. You're not I recharging. Up at like half one and then can't go back to sleep. Yeah. 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 And the yeah. worst thing yeah. is to have no the electronics. Devices, no TV, nothing that's going to make you make the eye movement. Mm. No phone. One hour for one. You could read a book. 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 You could read a book, but no Kindle, no television. No nothing TV. electronic. Mm. It really is. It's it's a, a discipline for you. It really is a major discipline for you, but really important. Yes? But also a discipline is also just briefly having your agenda or in writing. So yes, briefly, yes. So that if you lost your phone, you mm. think, oh, you know what you are. is this? Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, just briefly. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I started doing something at work. You know when you said about um, things like interruptions like the phone, the mm. email, et cetera, um, because everyone was sort of, People come, they work with on what works on their timetable, not necessarily what works on mm. yours. So they'll come to you with something that they want done. It's like, well, actually, I am in the middle of something. So we kind of create this sort of um, traffic light system. So you had on your, by your desk, so the red, amber, and mm. green. So green, absolutely, come on by, chat, and chat to me. But if it was on red, it was basically, you know, seriously, just at your peril. Mm. Because, you know, I tried doing the explaining that every time you interrupt me, for your whatever it is, it will take me mm. 20 minutes Absolutely. to get back to where I was before you did this. Absolutely. And impacting on my work day. Yes, yes, and yes. And it was like this, you know, it, we've got to have a sort of a mutual self-respect here. You know, it's, it's, it's not fair mm. that I, you know, we, you know, and if you, if you approach somebody, is it convenient to talk mm. at the mm. moment? Mm. It's courtesy. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes, it yes. Really, 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 I mean, at first, it, you know, people got a little bit mippy and it's like, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. And it's like, no, it's, this is mutual respect. Absolutely. I've got a job to do as well. Mm. And if you keep interrupting me mm. just because it's coming to your head and you want to talk yes, to me about yes. it, then it actually doesn't work. No, on absolutely. My it's a, it is mutual respect, it's yeah. exactly right. And it makes you more efficient. So you say to somebody, is now a good time? Right. Well, not now, but actually half an hour is fine. Yeah. Fine, finish what you're doing. That's so much better because the time that would take for you to go back to that piece of work, they don't see that. So it's such an important discipline, such an important so discipline. So giving them the opening to approach you to say when can they approach you? Yeah, so well, the, the, the little <laughs> bit like, the red was, on your head be it, don't come near me. The amber was proceed with caution. <laughs> and green was, you know, come on by and ask me whatever you need. And, yeah. you know, and you did change it. You did, yes. you know, you did flip over your, your, your three sure sheets. You there. But you might be really reasonable. How senior the person is. Yes, you're probably right. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's yes. where they can't they get the, the, the thing in. But they're also, I've, I've had yeah. found even with senior managers that by having that discussion with them, um, you know, and a lot of them have actually sort of admitted the fact that, yeah, it just came into my head, so I just wanted to blow yes. it out. But then they know that yeah. how difficult it can actually be. And, and you, it, it's... I think that yes. I think it, I think with senior yes. I think if senior management, it is. I think if senior management were actually to hear the benefits of that behavior, and what would, what ha, what the behavior is doing if they're continually interrupting, they will actually think twice. It is it is respect, but even senior, it's a conversation piece. It's not like oh, I'm not going to speak to you. It's like as of. And you know, having the right words, saying it nicely at, at the right time, 
to say, I think it's probably more helpful for you, help for me, make me much more efficient and much more productive. Oh, okay, how, how, where do I sign on the bottom dotted line? So therefore, I think that, yes, that is a conversation. It's not just putting up the traffic lights. It's actually a conversation to have, mm -hmm. which I think they would, be wel they would welcome. If it's, you've got to sell it. You've got to sell it. It's an interesting point. But will you all please, please do connect with me at LinkedIn. Do keep in contact with me. And also, Stress Awareness Week coming up. If there's anything you want to be done in-house as far as stress is concerned, give me a call. But um, yes, keep, keep in touch, really keep in touch. Thank Pleasure. You.